Kukotai deals with the concepts of reward and punishment in a most direct and at moments shocking fashion. As Bechukotai begins, Moses is still on Mount Sinai, still talking to God about all the things that have been keeping them busy in the book of Vayikra. Priests, holiness, purity. God starts by telling Moses that if the people of Israel keep their covenant and obey the laws of the Torah, then they will be rewarded with peace and tranquility in the land. But if they defy the divine will, then they will be punished with terrible curses. The Torah speaks briefly about the rewards, rain in its season, plentiful crops, and all the good things that a farming people could ask for, before going on to list several dozen horrifying punishments, the likes of which are almost unseemly to mention in polite company. Among the curses are fever, sores, homicidal wild animals, starvation, exile from the land, and worst of all, cannibalism of one's own children. God ends the list of curses by foreseeing the people punished by an exile from the land, but states that in the midst of this exile, God's presence will still dwell among them. And God will remember the covenant with their ancestors, Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, and will not completely forsake them. At this point, there is an abrupt shift in the tone of the text. The rest of Bechukotai deals with a kind of taxation code, enumerating who must bring what as an offering to the priests. It seems as if the list of curses has terrified the Torah herself, and the text must take an abrupt about-face and delve into the most boring and prosaic of matters. But the list of curses still haunts us. The specificness of the curses and their lack of connection to specific crimes has presented a problem to interpreters of the Torah throughout the ages. It is hard to imagine what crime deserves the punishment of a parent being forced to eat his or her own children. This last curse is particularly puzzling, for it seems to directly contradict another section of the Torah, the part that teaches that children will not be put to death for the crimes of their parents. It might seem to a reader of Bechukotai that we have caught God in a particularly volatile state of mind. The Holy One is so consumed with rage at the future wrongdoings of the children of Israel that God might break the very same commandments that the Torah originally set forth. But as in any conflict between people who love one another, the fire of anger is followed by remembrances of better times, and merciful tenderness is revealed. By the end of the list of curses, God has been so utterly emptied of rage that the mercy hidden behind the punishment can be revealed. Staring at the image that the curses conjure of the children of Israel, broken-hearted and flailing in the midst of their suffering, opens up a passageway to forgiveness and to remembering the past love that God felt for the holy ancestors, whose merits still act to protect their children. During these chapters of the book of Vayikra, or Leviticus, God has shared much technical knowledge about holiness, purity, and priesthood. As we move on, we can look at each other with pride and say, Chazak, Chazak, Venit Chazek. Be strong, be strong, and may we be strengthened.